There we go. Okay, we're live, everyone. Welcome back. And this time we've got some amazing leaders, team leaders in Southern California out here close to me. And these are some friends that I have. And I wanted to showcase them because they're doing some really great things for their offices. And I want to give you some insight as to what you could possibly be doing as well, either as a leader for, for a team or a brokerage or even for yourself, right? So we've all got something to learn here and we've got Jennifer. I'm just gonna go from the left on my screen. Jennifer, can you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Jennifer Kutra. I am the uh, co-team lead of Kellogg's Beach Cities. Uh, and I'm also the regional MCA for the LA Coastville West Side Central Southern Region. And I've been with Kellogg's for 16 years. Wow, nice. It's a long time. I love it. All right, Josh, you're up to bat. Hey, glad to be here. I'm Josh Spitzen. I'm the team leader of Keller Williams Beverly Hills. Uh, I'm an owner and investor in Keller Williams Cerritos, La Mirada, and Keller Williams Newport Estates. Been with Keller it. Williams coming on eight years. Damn, man, that's good. That's good. You're like half <laughs> of Jennifer. You're, you're yes. not as good as Jennifer yet. I, I know Scott. that. <laughs> you're, you're up, Scott. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Tristan. How you get? Hey guys, my name is Scott Cotto, team leader of Keller Williams Pacific Estates in La Mirada. I'm also a partner in uh, our Long Beach sister office. I also have a real estate team based in, well, now in La Mirada. We just transitioned from Long Beach to La Mirada. So, oh, dude, I didn't board. know that. Congrats. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, thanks for having very, me. Very cool. And thanks for being Scott on. Scott and I are awesome. partners in La Mirada. And so, uh, he's doing an amazing nice. job. I'm feeling left out here, guys. It's like, no, no partnership love. Except Paul. What's up, Paul? Our How you doing? partners in Newport as well, actually. So. I love that. Paul, thanks for being on, buddy. Yeah, it's a strong, it's a strong team. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, I just took an extra minute to get my virtual background up. So there you go. I like it. That's a great background. Yeah. Josh wins on the background, though. Yeah, mine. <laughs> Who not? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think a uh, I think if you if you got it at this point, it, it, you know, it's now uh, Zoom 2.0, and I think that you know the cool kids had the virtual background uh, right from the beginning, and now I think if you go with the regular background again, you're a step up. You know, I'm not sure why, right, man. <laughs> I'm definitely not a cool kid. <laughs> you're getting there. I'm, you're I'm getting working there. on it. Hey, what that's a great on? that's a great segue. Uh, that's a great segue because, you know, I think, uh, Josh, and I appreciate the self deprecation of saying I'm not a cool kid. And, uh, you know, our relationship is good enough that I can say, uh, actually he's kind of right about that, you know, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and what you see is, uh, and what you see is, and that, and that takes nothing away, absolutely nothing away from, from, uh, Josh's leadership and, and, and everyone, everyone on the panel, has uh has superpowers you know and and so for example uh I, i'd love to ask each of you what your superpower is and uh you know when we get to scott whatever scott says uh we'll add being a cool kid to his superpowers uh because because that's one of, it's not i'm not I, that's not one of mine either but um you know jen you're right on my uh immediately next to me on 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 uh on the panel so what 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 is your superpower? Um, my superpower is uh, probably, I would say, oh, I want to say organization and, um, and I was going to say financial. So between on those two. <laughs> okay. And, and if I, again, one of the, one of the great benefits that I have is, uh, is I have uh, the ability to know the know the inner workings of these folks um, and have worked very closely with them for a long period of time. Uh, Jen, you uh, one of the things that we looked at with you in terms of statistics were um, you had the best retention, right? And I know you know some of the some of the some of the statistics. You had the best retention by far uh, in the region. And so, um, tell me, tell me how you manage that. Uh, what does that look like? Now you said organization, right. And financial. So 
Now I'm sitting with a team leader who's super organized and great with financials, not the usual thing, but I want to know how do you turn that into retention? Well, I, I think that the main thing that I try to come across with my agents and, you know, I, some of them are on here, so hopefully they can agree with me on this, is that our number one focus is actually on our agents. So, you know, when COVID hit, uh, I think that we stepped up and tried to make sure that they were taken care of in every possible aspect, meaning learning the PPP loans, learning about the EIDLs, um, putting webinars for them, getting our CPA on board. And then after the fact, we're still following up, making sure, are they okay? Um, making sure they understand the rules that are changing uh, on the financial side so it can be 100% forgiven. We have a webinar coming up here, I think uh, next Friday, just the ever changing um, rules on the PVP. So when, I, when we're looking at retention side, or I think it's just focusing on what are the needs of the current, current agents and how can we best support them? And it may not be just in real estate, it could be everywhere. Um, life in general, we, you know, 2020 was our year of focusing on profit first, tax free wealth, um, looking at the five year plan. What is it for their kids on the 529 um, plans for them? Is that better? Should they open up a custodial account? Um, just giving them the outside vision, just not just real estate, right? Like, but what can we do for their families five, 10 years from now? And, and I want to stop there because, um, if I could have, you know, listed in the chat box, for example, all the different things, the value that she added, it's a non, it's a, it, a lot of it might be non real estate or seemingly non real estate, the value that she added for the people in her network. Now we have a lot of this, this webinar is not about, um, hey, we've got team leaders, Let, let's show you how to be a great team leader, right? Uh, we have a lot of people on here that have spheres of influence, okay? And so when I, when I hear that, uh, taking it to agents, so now I'm an agent, wh what do I get from that? And, and I get a lot, and that is you can use the things that Jen just said uh, as topics for touching your sphere of influence. If you want to touch your sphere of influence and say, hey, I sold a house on 123 Elm Street, yay for me. Or I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do an Instagram post and look at what cool restaurant I ate at. Okay, that's that's that could be mildly interesting. All right, um, if I do a if I reach out to every one of the uh, clients in my or clients and potential clients leads in my sphere of influence, and I say, hey, times are tough. Um, I'm gonna keep you posted on everything you need to know about the PPPs. I'm going to show you how to get the money. Okay. Now, Jen, Jen's a, an agent, but she's not my agent, but I'm on her mailing list. I have a couple of other agents I might use before Jen, but I know her. Now, suddenly Jen is giving me the information to feed my family and keep my, uh, and, and keep my business afloat during these times. That's A plus information. Well, and I think that the great, you know, with COVID, what happened was we all came together so while I was doing those items and focusing on the financials, then I was able to ask, you know, Scott to be on my team meeting and like, hey, can you help me teach about like KW Command and the Facebook ads, et cetera, because I think Scott's superpower is that he's a mega agent, et cetera, right? And then I have Jonathan from Newport coming and helping me with the market stats. So again, looking out to our um, sphere that we have out there and then pulling the resources that we have to give to our associates. Mm -hmm. that's awesome uh and and so and so josh uh josh what uh i already you know i right i'm the ter i'm i'm the worst I, I, I can be the worst uh interviewer ever i just got done saying josh is uh josh's superpower is not being cool but probably <laughs> probably you know a lot of people would disagree with me or, or for sure i'm not cool so could be josh, super, dude, josh is super buffed out dude <laughs> <laughs> right he's, he's I, relentless. Would, I would say my superpower is my sustained uh very high energy um which goes hand in hand with my level of discipline and consistency mm -hmm. and and so um how does that, that relate to the to, massive action uh okay so so how does that relate to how does that relate to success 
on the job. I mean, that should be pretty obvious, but I'm going to go ahead and ask it anyway. So I'm just a firm believer that mindset is 90% of achievement. Um, uh -huh. You could have all the tools and resources in the world, but if you're not, you don't have the right mindset and the right will to apply them, they're meaningless. So mm -hmm. I, I firmly believe that Keller Williams provides the best platform in this industry. And it's why I joined the company almost eight years ago, having nothing to do with the real estate world. Uh, mm -hmm. Prior to learning about Keller Williams and many of the other um, brokerages. Um, so I firmly believe that the platform that Keller provides allows us to work a lot smarter. But at the end of the day, if you don't have the right mindset, it doesn't matter. You can be in the best environment in the world if you're not willing to apply what, what you have, then it, it's not going to matter. So I really focus on helping people think differently. I firmly believe we all have more than enough to achieve anything we're committed to achieving. And being around the right people and the, with the right resources allows us to uh, be the best version of ourselves. Okay, so so now I'm uh, and and I'm gonna if you don't do this on your own, I'm gonna do it every after every one of your phenomenal answers uh, because that's great. Um, I really have two, you know, I have I have I have a couple of a question and, and a comment too, and that is uh, uh, how Josh. Agents are watching this, okay? So you you have passion, you have um, super high energy. I agree; those are those are phenomenal. Uh, those are phenomenal superpowers, okay? Um, how do I translate that to the average agent? So I'm an agent. I do a great business, okay? But you know, I just don't have Josh's discipline. So how's that going to help me? Um, what do you, what do you say to an agent that does a really good business or wants to do a great business, but doesn't feel like they have that energy and discipline that you have? It gets back to like your purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you do what you do every day? What drives you? What motivates you? And really get in touch with what that looks like. And then when you don't feel like doing, and then creating a plan, right? Have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're, you're, you're operating rudderless, you know? So you know in advance of the day what you need to do that day to accomplish what your purpose is. So get in touch with your purpose, create a plan to fulfill that purpose. And then when that purpose is bigger than the, the sacrifice you need to make and you're crystal clear on that purpose, when you don't feel like doing it, you're going to do it regardless, right? Because action drives how you feel. You don't let your, your feelings drive whether you do it or not because we all don't feel like doing it me included, believe me. But when that happens, um, I think about why I'm doing it and then I do it. And then ironically, I feel much better afterwards. So don't let your feelings drive your actions, let your purpose drive your actions. And the beauty of it is that you'll feel a lot better as a result mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and get started, you know, just go, don't overthink it. I think get into action, get into action, you know, and, and I like to, you know, per, I, I think leadership is leading by example. Mm -hmm. So I want to model that and I, I hold myself and I say it and I write about it and I read about it and I, that holds me accountable to lead by example. So when I don't feel like doing it, I'm crystal clear that, you know, what drives me is providing a platform that positively impacts people's lives. So when I don't feel like doing it about it, all I do is think about that purpose mm -hmm. and it, it's non-negotiable. Does that keep you going all the time, Josh? Because I find that a big challenge for, for most agents and team leaders and just leaders in general. We all go through days where we're like, mm, you know, I just, I'm just not going to do anything today. But how do you get back on the horse the next day uh, when you've had a day like that? Because not everybody is as, and this is towards you being awesome. All right. Not everybody's as consistent uh, as you are. Where can we get the consistency to keep going? Is it just really simple motivation and outlining what you're doing and having a purpose or what, what is it? Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're all a product of our habits, right? So as you start to do it and it becomes regular, it takes a lot more, as we say, willpower initially to create a new habit. But once you start to do it on a consistent basis, it becomes somewhat automated. My day is like very much in flow. I don't have to think about half the things I'm doing because I do them all the time. They become habit. That helps create that momentum and that flow. And, that then you, and, and I also think it's important to take time away and decompress and reflect and process what happened. You need time to, to rejuvenate. So I think that's part of creating that sustainable plan needs to be time away um, from what you're doing so that you can process, reflect, you know, refresh, 
And that's unique for everyone. It's also having a great level of self-awareness. I always say to people, I don't prescribe what I eat because anyone who's been around me knows I'm very disciplined about what I eat. That's not sustainable for most other people and that's okay. So whatever your plan is, be really mindful about it being sustainable because nothing extraordinary happens overnight, period. So then put on, put on your team leader hat when yep. you bring in agents, newer agents or any agent and you see them struggling what are some of the things that you go and say, hey, please look, start doing this or let's do this? Where, where do you go with them? So I, I look at, do they have a purpose? Do they have a goal? And then do they have a plan? Is that plan crystal clear in terms of what are the activities they need to do on a daily basis reflected in their calendar? Do they have a calendar? And then quite frankly, 90% of the time they don't. But if they do, then again, we're measuring what we're doing. We're measuring the activities to determine, hey, is this working or not? Because then that gives us an opportunity to adjust if the data tells us otherwise. But it usually comes back to they don't, they're not crystal clear in their purpose and they don't really first and foremost have a plan with the detailed activities that they need to do every day. Because at the end of the day, it's about accountability. You know, whatever that looks like for each person, whether it's to your family, whether it's you're part of a team, whether it's a peer partner, whether it's a coach, creating accountability is absolutely essential to achieve at the highest levels. And, and I think if you, I think if you did just this and that's, that's, let's take this in two parts. Um, if you, so <laughs> breaking it down to this easy, right? I just let, and, and we're going to get Scott on this too. So, so. Oh, I'm enjoying uh, it. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so taking notes. if I, if and I, these just, guys all hold me accountable. That's the beauty of it all. Yeah. I mean, Paul, Scott, Jen, we all hold each other accountable. Yeah. So, so. Now, if I did this, okay, now I'm an, I'm, a, I'm an agent and I'm listening to this webinar. And if all you do is you take what Jen says in terms of the activity should be, okay, and that's how do I, because at the end of the day, real estate sales is a relationship business, okay? So the more we reach out and touch our client database, the more business we're going to get full stop. Okay. So now I take five or six ideas that Jen said she's doing with her agents to, to build the best retention. Okay. Because, you know, I butcher this stat every single time I do it, but you guys will either correct me or, uh, or, you know, go with my estimates, but you know, it's the national association of realtor statistic and they do a survey post close and post close, you know, this astronomically high number of realtors uh, uh, did a great job, good enough to be used again, let's say 88%. And then, you know, how long does it take for that person that you put in that house who would hire you again to sell again? And that's, you know, seven or eight years, depends on the location. And then after that, how many actually use that realtor? And then the, the number is phenomenally low, okay? So it's 12%. So that's people that have done a bunch of business in the past. You need to keep better in contact with your sphere. It will create much, much, much more business, period. Now, if you don't have the business to begin with, reaching out to people who you know, who is your sphere, okay? And, and, and actually, I'll push it to Scott. So you've got it. You've got it. You've got it. I'm a, I've got an agent. I want an answer to that first question, but, but to finish with this point, I'm going to ask Scott, hey, I'm a cool, I'm an agent. Uh, it's not me. I'm a, it's not Paul. I am a cool guy. I have, uh, you know, an ability to connect and sell, but I just, I don't really have a database. I really don't know. I have a sphere of influence or whatever. Where, where, where do I, where do I start just to get the names that we're going to run this program on? Friends and family, people who know you, like you and trust you. Mm -hmm. Simple Excel spreadsheet. Everyone can come up with a hundred people and just start with your core, the people who are closest to you and then just start venturing out mm -hmm, to as mm -hmm. far as affiliates, you know, mm -hmm. but I'm talking your kids, uh, baseball coach, the roster for the little league team, mm -hmm. my daughter's dance team, you mm -hmm. know, who are all on the team and connecting with all of those people, but it's just starting with the core and then slowly gradually growing out. And if, and if we don't know, if it makes us nervous to, you know, hey, I'm a new realtor and I don't want to be, 
geez, I don't want to be heavy handed. I don't want to be the used car salesman. I don't want to be, these are the things that stand in the way of people doing what they need to do. And that is anytime you add great value, okay, you're not the used car salesman. The used car salesman is like, how do I get you out of the lot with one of these cars, right? And, and that's not the way people buy houses. So, um, you know, if I use Jen's approach of, you know, I'm going to be real helpful, okay? And I'm going to reach out on a very regular basis to my sphere. And if you don't, you know, if you don't have a database, whoops, right? It's hard to get that on there. If you don't have a database um, or you think you don't, and you don't know your friends, if you're, start like Scott said, friends and family. The other thing I do is like, how many contacts do you have in your phone? I don't know exactly. anybody that doesn't have 500 contacts in their phone. You know, uh, I've been around a long time. I have 3,000. So, you know, 80% of those or maybe 100% of those will be, will be, will be great. So now, so now uh, Scott, what, what, uh, Oh, so before I go, right, I'm going to go to Scott's superpower, but I'll just, I'll, I'll tie in a bow what I was going to say. And that's that, that's that. Um, so now a brand new agent or a seasoned agent, we're going to take some of the content that some of the valuable content and reach out to our sphere. Okay. Of past clients, plus people who know, like, and trust us. We're a new agent. Everyone in our, in our iPhone uh, is, is our database. And the point to add Josh's superpower on top of that is to say, I need to wake up today and know how many contacts I'm going to make. Okay. And the way to do that really is to take like a monthly goal or a weekly goal. We can, we can do business planning. Every team leader in our, in our regions can do business planning for us. Tell us how many, you know, where are your goals? Okay. How many sales are you gonna have to do to meet those goals? How many contacts are you going to need to get there? And then, and then just rep, just run the play that, uh, that, that Josh and Jen talked about. So we've got content and now how many contacts per day are we going to do? At least now I have a crystal clear plan. Okay. And then, and then, uh, so, so and I'm sure you have plenty to add to that, Scott, if you have something to add yeah. to that or, or get well, add to that plus tell us your superpower. Okay. Let me, let me, uh, let me try to frame this up. So yesterday we just did a quick business planning for a couple agents that recently joined us. And the goal was making $200,000 in the next 12 months. So how do we do that? So we just did a one, three, five or a GPS. So the goal was 15 transactions based on their average sales price. And we figured that the board's right behind me. We figured that we were going to do five listings and 10 buyers, which would total 15 transactions. And we, listed out what are the strategies. So what are the lead gen levers we're gonna pull on to generate the five listings? And what are the lead generation levers we're gonna pull on to attract 10 buyer opportunities? Based on his database, he had 75 people in his database, according to the MREA 12 to two ratio, but somewhere around seven transactions, right? So now we know that if we touch his database of 75 people 33 times purposefully, like Josh is saying, that would transact to seven deals. The goal is 15 though, right? So the gap is eight transactions. That's where everything kind of stops. Like people go, okay, I got eight more transactions. Where are they gonna come from? If we go back to the MREA, a 50 to one ratio, right? That's 400 contacts we need to add to the database over a calendar year. Mm -hmm. While most agents were all entrepreneurial minded, there's 52 weeks in the year, we're gonna work 44 weeks. That means in 44 weeks, uh, 400 contacts added to the database would be nine contacts a week. Mm -hmm. If we want to boil it down even smaller than that, and you work five days a week, that's just north of two contacts a week or day. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Every day I got a prospect and I need to add two new people to my database mm -hmm. to get that eight transactions from my have not met because mm -hmm. seven are coming from my sphere of influence. They're on autopilot 33 touch. Mm -hmm. My 50 to one have not met two people a day. You'll get eight transactions. Oh, working smart. That's the key to it all. Yeah. It's a roommate of Keller Williams, right? And how, Scott, so, so thanks for, you know, telling me that. And, and uh, Scott, what, uh, what are you going to tell me to do to add to a day? Because I'm, 
I'm, I'm not super cool, but I'm purposeful and semi cool and I've got a pretty good database, but I, but I need to add two a day. So, so how am I going to do that? Well, I would ask like, we do have a needs analysis and kind of see what some of your strengths are, probably analyze your behavioral style, do a behavioral assessment, see what your strengths and weaknesses are. But, but you know me pretty good. Okay. So for you, I mean, you're social. So I would say social media plays a big piece in this right now. It's just telling your story. You talk about that all the time. It's sharing and talking about your story and people will naturally gravitate towards your consistency on Paul's day to day. Um, so you could do social media, you could do outbound. I, I don't think you're a cold caller. You're definitely not going to call expired listings or you're not going to probably circle prospects. So you'll probably succeed through your relationships, mm -hmm. right? Getting referrals. Right. Uh, Fizbo's might be a good one. Mm -hmm. um, open houses we can't do. Virtual mm -hmm. open houses we could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are just a few ideas on how to attract just two people a day. Mm -hmm. to the database. Okay. And, and if you're my coach, one of the things I would say to you is, hey, you know what? I'm, I, I, I promise you I'm going to hit my two a day. Um, you know, I might, I might do, uh, I might, I might add four or six in one day, you know, and then I might add zero another day. Uh, one of the things that I find is daily reporting, uh, is something there's magic in daily reporting and, and one of the ways daily reporting for me. And so if I'm an agent, I would find a, uh, a peer partner, or if you're an agent anywhere, in our regions and you want to be held daily accountable to how many contacts you're adding to your database or how many times you're reaching out to your to your database and touching them and how you're doing that if you want to be held daily accountable uh just email uh well you know i would say i would say go through your team leader but but we'll we will we'll the region can provide that accountability for you for free you know, we'll, we're, we're doing that for, for our team leaders. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're, we're happy to do that. And one of the ways that I get uh, even really skilled, amazing team leaders to report daily is I give them absolute permission to report zeros, right? Because when we do a hundred day program, the people that have the most activity, right? They still have had multiple days with zero. So if you're kicking yourself, for doing a zero three days in a row even that's okay I, I i i say no problem dust yourself off you promised two a day you 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 turned in three zeros that's important uh to actually turn them in and now turn us in a six you know turn us in an eight uh and we're all good um so 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 there you go can uh, i add a piece to that paul please. real quick it's just going piggybacking what tristan was asking josh earlier like if you're an agent and you're succeeding at a high level, but how do you stay in that sweet spot, that pocket? Mm -hmm. um, how do you stay in the pocket? It's, um, it's accountability. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's accountability. But I, I right. lost my train of thought. It'll come to me in a second. No, that's okay. I looked that's... down at my notes and I read something else. And, but... <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that, that's okay. It happens, it happens to all of us. But yeah, accountability is, so, so now basically we've got, uh, we've got a, we didn't hear Scott's superpower. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I would, I would say I'm a connector. Uh huh. Okay. I connect people. And and that's great. Again, it's authenticity. Okay. Humility. Okay. So 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 now we're getting a little closer because you know when I'm on a panel, uh, every every answer, great answer that you guys give, I filter it through. Uh, I'm, I'm an agent. I'm on this. I'm listening to this webinar. How do I turn this into my day to day? So, so Scott, you're a great connector. That's great. Uh, I'm a great connector too. Now what do I do? So, mm -hmm. so for great connectors, how do you leverage your superpower into, uh, into more business right now? Um, I think it's just knowing investing into people. Mm -hmm. and knowing who they are and what their strengths are. Mm -hmm. And so just an example, Josh had asked me about something yesterday and said, Hey, here's my challenge. Who comes to mind? Mm -hmm. And, you know, people just start popping into my mind who, for what his need is specifically. Um, so again, I think I figure that out by just investing in them 
getting to know them, working with them in business. Um, and then that's kind of banked in the back of my mind. And so when opportunity presents itself or comes available, I just, or it's, and it's also, Paul, it could be a gap in my own business or my blind spot. Like I know I'm vulnerable towards something. It's a weakness. Who do I know that I can bring in? You know, Gary Keller always talks about the who. So who do I know that I can plug in there and stop that for me or put a bandaid on it or take it over? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I love it. Hey, Paul, if I can just interject one thing. I mean, I sure. obviously know Jen and Scott very well. I mean, it's the definition of like leadership. These guys give with no expectation of anything in return, and people genuinely know they care. So that that's, I think, both of their superpowers, big time. And, and you mentioned authenticity, too. And and one of the things that stops people sometimes is is they're afraid to, you know, they're afraid to mess up, you know, and, and so sometimes people will be nervous about coming on a webinar or, or, or being nervous about speaking in public. There's probably a bunch of people. I used to be nervous about speaking in public and I, and I love to do it now. And Me too. You, you know, right. Okay. So you watched it in action because Scott said, Hey, I have a great idea. Then we get to Scott and he kind of goes, Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait, I lost my train of thought. Right. If that knocks him totally off his game, then that's a, that is a reason to, to be afraid of public speaking. But what Scott did was, was take the option of authenticity and go, wow, I, I lost my train of thought. Never mind. It'll come to me, you know, go down the row. And nobody, nobody, when you're speaking in public, if you do that, or you're on this webinar, you do that, nobody thinks you're dumb. So they go, oh yeah, sure. That happens to everybody. So you know, I haven't even thought of it again. I didn't think about it again until we were talking about authenticity, but, but the, the, the way to inject authenticity into, um, into, uh, social media and Scott's really great at this. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. It's really one of Scott's superpowers is that, you know, Instagram, Facebook, people tend to put their, their best life out there. Some like 1% version of what they're really living. And, and people are so tired of hearing that, you know, let me show you the fanciest restaurant I ate at. Let me show you the epic day I had. That's, that's cool. You know, but people are tired of it too. And to say, you know, if you got on, if you said, Hey, I had an epic day, here's what's good. You know? And then once a week you said, you know what? I had a crap day. Here's what happened. You know, uh, uh, I need some help getting lifted out of this. You know, does anybody have suggestions, right? That kind of authenticity is going to, is going to make posts blow up. Do you, do you agree with that, Scott? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's just sharing your story. So that means the good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and if I may add, I, I do recall what I was going to say back to Tristan and Josh. It's about balance. I've, I think it's about balance. And so if someone's out of their rhythm, it, let, them have the, let them have their time. You got to recalibrate. You got to invest time in yourself because when, when, when we feel good, then we can certainly portray that and help others, people get what they want. Mm -hmm. so it's about balance. So if you don't report your numbers, Paul, like you said, you give us permission, zero, zero. Okay. You're in your little pity party, have at it. And then, you know, the next day the switch hits and I'm back at it. Mm -hmm. Reporting mm -hmm. my numbers, mm -hmm. 20 contacts, five appointments, whatever that looks like. Yeah. And you have to do it the way that you, that works for you. And I always right. tell my agents this, that if I, if I'm using Google calendar, et cetera, and I'm putting everything in, but you're more of an agenda book person where it's on paper, go the agenda book route because if you're trying to force yourself into something that just doesn't feel right, it's, you're just not going to get done. You know, you're going to get more accomplished in the norm that you just already have. Right. So just keep going on that path and making sure you're hitting your daily dues and trying to change everything to something that just isn't you. Yeah. It gets back to what you said, Paul. It's like respecting that everyone has their own unique superpower and not trying to put people in a box because no one wants to feel that way right and leverage that superpower have awareness around it and fortify it and build upon it that's you know the, one of the keys to life and one of the things we usually do is we usually focus uh we're having we're having sort of two panels on leadership and uh and i i definitely we invited a bunch of people i definitely noticed for sure that that the three on today are three that i work uh closely with in my offices we're, we're gonna have another leadership panel I'm going to make sure that we get uh, all three leadership from outside uh, because there's so many people that are great. We invited two that weren't that weren't able to make it. Um, but 
one of the things that that it, that I got from an agent. Uh, most of the time, we're getting agent uh, agents on these panels, and and we decided, Tristan and I decided, let's go with leadership as it pertains to our agents for these next two panels. And and one of the things that uh, one of my top agents that we interviewed, actually uh, a, an agent from another company, said the upside of your upside will always be greater than the upside of your downside. Okay. So um, I think if you have, I think if you really want to improve your business, step one is always lead generation. And then to Jen's point, you know, if you can genuinely lead generate in a way that's most comfortable for you, uh, that's okay that you should go for that. Now, uh, I, I, I don't like door knocking. Uh, I don't, I don't love door knocking. I don't love cold calling. Okay. Um, if I can generate enough real contacts that aren't cold calls and that aren't door knocking, then that's okay. Otherwise bite the bullet and do some uncomfortable stuff, you know, but just make sure you're hitting your number for contacts per day. I would say, um, I would say a num to put it in real numbers, uh, you know, and again, Scott, well, you guys all will have an opinion on this. I would say 10 live purposeful conversations a day. Uh, do you, do you guys think that number is too high, too low? Per day? Yeah. Per day. I, I would say that's uh, maybe from your have bets, just checking in. Right. Um, but I think, I think it just, if the goal is to added people to the database, then you need to speak to as many people as you need to speak to, to get to the two, mm -hmm. because you okay. have a goal of getting eight transactions from that piece of business right there. But 10 a good placeholder. I mean, but yeah, I think it just makes as many calls. Oh, I, I think it, to Scott's point, I think it really depends on that personal, that person's business and their goals. Because that's unique for everyone as to, you know, you know, what's, what's the incremental, you know, improvement that they're trying to make, you know, relative to the goals that they have. Um, but I mean, it's a good, it's a good frame of reference. Yeah. So Scott, you said, you know, do as many contacts as you need to do. So long as, um, so long as you get two added to the database. Now, how do I know if I add them to the database? Or not? Let's say I have some casual conversation with somebody. They're not all that interested in me, but I, but I did talk to them and I did get their info. Does that count or how do I know? How do I know? Well, it does need to be a conversation about real estate and there should be some sort of motivation at some point in time to transact. Mm -hmm. That and, would be a contact. Okay. So being the leader on our panel, who's also, you know, runs a mega team, what, uh, what is, what's, what are the best scripts that I could use to, to uh, make it a real estate conversation? You know, it's really the, what you've talked about, which is just making eye care calls, you know, mm -hmm. or, and so succeeding through others. So the call might sound something like uh, just checking in, Paul, how are you holding up? How, how are the kids? How are you dealing with the pandemic? And then you're going to inevitably at some point in time ask me, well, Scott, how are you? How's business? How are you selling house? Are you still, are you still in the business? Right. And then that's really my permission to open the door and walk right through. And now oh, it's yeah. funny you asked me. And then I get to highlight all of the things that we're doing mm -hmm. and talk about how we're transacting during this epidemic. Do you think that, you know, one of the things that I like to do when I have those conversations is I, I, I get my, I get my uh, notebook out, you know, and I, and I write down uh, not a lot, but maybe two or three, you know, very sort of headline grabbing uh, tidbits that are news. So like, oh, well, actually, you know, I checked in the uh, LAMLS after having been down X percent. Uh, you know, or the or the 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 sales in our micro market after having been down, uh, you know, X percent over the last couple of months, or now have spiked up, or the showing times have mm. have changed. Mm -hmm. um, and we we went through some of those stats. I don't have them off the top of my head, but that's the sort of stats I would use. That they have a couple of really good stats 
Um, and if you have any stats like that, that you want to share with a group, that's great. The three of you, if not, you know, I'll, I'll tell you how to get them. Um, I'll just say the one that Eddie shared at our last accountability meeting. Um, I believe that we're right back where January, February, as far as showings go, mm. so we're, we're right back where we picked up over the last five, four months. So we went down and now we're right back up to where we were in February of mm. 2020. And inventory is historically still tremendously low. So it's, right. it's very much, you know, a seller's market. Mm. And we've seen very little you know, price adjustment mm -hmm. and every market's local. So I think it's important depending upon the particular agent, what, what they want to speak about, but having some of those basic statistics and they don't need to get too much in the weeds, but having some concrete data to your point, Paul really is powerful. Mm -hmm. And that that's going to resonate to that particular potential client. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and what, uh, what, so, so maybe, you know what, and, that, and that, let's switch gears a little bit. And, and if, if people, uh, if people, now I'm looking at the, at the chat box, I want to make sure uh, we're answering questions. If anybody has any questions they, they have for us, please. Uh, yeah. I can make one point too, coming back to what we said about, I think we, we overcomplicate all of it. Okay. Yes. Um, and I think people transact with someone that gets to them first, typically, that mm -hmm. they can trust, mm -hmm. right? Just think about just that, get to them first and that they can trust. They're not necessarily looking for the person who sold the most homes in that area or any of that stuff. They really, you just need to engender trust by showing you care and having some data would be helpful in that process mm -hmm. and get there first and, and, and follow up. Mm -hmm. So like that, you know, I hear a lot of newer agents, they get all nervous. Like I didn't sell as many homes as that. They're not, Clients typically are not looking for the number one agent. They don't care about that. They just need to know who showed up at their door or their phone or, or their screen that they can trust, that they, that they know that, that that person cares. And mm -hmm. we all can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the more we're in action and the more conversations we're having, uh, the more effective that's going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's a great one. And then also, being the area expert, you know, or being the area expert, but also having, having some expertise. Like, for example, one of the things I always say is, hey, interest rates have hit, hit in a, an historic low. Okay. If you just say that alone, um, then, then, yeah, I think we all know that's true. If you're able to give some data around that, okay, then, then, then you really sound like the expert. Like, hey, interest rates have been an historic low. Um, you know, Freddie Mac started surveying lenders in 1971 and interest rates were about seven and a half percent. Okay. That's 1971. If you're trending a little bit, it went up to about nine and a half percent in 1981. Um, and then, and then eventually there was a, there was a spike uh, of 18.63. Okay. And then, and now we're all the way back in 2012 to 3.31 and now here's what the rates are today. See, if you can, you can say that now it's like, wow, this guy really knows, you know, and all you have to do is like, is Google historic mortgage, mortgage rates and you'll get that kind of numbers at your foot, at your fingertips. And that's what I would put beside you. Um, one of the things, you know, I appreciate, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so I appreciate, uh, people saying this, um, one and, and I want to talk technology also, but but I'm looking at the chat box and keep sending us questions because we want to be we want to be on top of what you're interested in. Um, somebody uh, wrote in the chat box, you know, hey, be careful. For example, um, you know, our church doesn't want. I think I think everywhere you go, um, you know, do you go to church to get business, right? So it's like, oh boy, that sounds that that, that to some people that sounds terrible. Or or you know, at my kid's school is a, a really good one. Um, but here's the thing, if you're, if you are a contributor in your community, right, people are going to look to you as a leader. And if you can be a leader in your church, people are going to look to you as a leader. And then when it comes time to, to do real estate sales, uh, they will look to you. I, if I were doing the church leadership thing, I'm going to do it because it's in my heart, right? So do what's in your heart anyway, and then, and then the business will flow from that. But I, if I were a leader in my church, I wouldn't be asking everybody, hey, do you know anybody that needs to buy or sell real estate? 
in, uh, in this following year. But I, at bare minimum, would let them all know that, uh, that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to, uh, uh, that I'm a realtor and I'm available. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, so let me switch to, uh, but, oh, yeah, so then here's, an, here's another piece, and I appreciate everybody saying it for sure, and that is that, um, um, you know, Gary Keller was talking about doing, and this is right out of the chat box too, um, Gary Keller was, was saying, talk to three to four times more people, okay? Um, I, I, I listened to a, I listened to a, uh, an interview that Gary did um, of the guy who was, you know, er, most people know uh, Robert Kiyosaki and Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, and this guy was actually, was it Keith Cunningham? Was that his name? Do you remember? Yep. yep. Okay, oh. Keith Cunningham. Yeah. So Keith Cunningham was the guy, he's the actual, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad's a parable, right? So it's sort of a made up story, mainly fictional story to, to make some points. But the rich, the real rich dad, the guy that Robert Kiyosaki uh, 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 modeled was a guy named Keith Cunningham. And we have a, an interview of Keith Cunningham, um, which anybody that wants. Uh, Amazing. Yeah. And I don't know if AJ is on this or not, but he could put the, he could put the uh, link to Keith Cunningham's interview in this chat box. It, it is so amazing. Um, and and in, in, a sh in Gary Keller's shift mentality, he's saying, hey, live on less and do three to four times more lead generation. But here's the thing. If you do that, you will come out the other side further ahead uh, of, of the people in your, uh, in your, uh, in your area. So I had the, I had the opportunity to interview um, among other people, be on a panel and interview uh, the number one the guy that might be the number one agent, in the United States, okay, um, single agent, right? In terms of production, and 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 also the number one agent in my area, and she is saying to me, um, she's getting more business than ever in this time period because what's happening is the people that they view as really the the experts in the area. When times get really tough, she would normally do a listing presentation. They'd call her and then they'd call one or two others and then they'd see who they like best. She might often win it. Okay. But they were interviewing two or three. Now people get scared. They're interview. They're saying, Hey, come over here and list my house. So if you're number one in your area, good for you. That's already happening for everyone else. Who's not one, number one in their area. What can we do? And the answer is, if you're number six in your area, right, and, and you came to me, you probably go to your own team leader, you'll do better, right, better advice. But if you're number six in your area, I might say, well, where is you, where are you number six? Where's number five? What are we going to do to get you to number five? What are you going to get you to do to number four? Right now, you may not go from number six to number one, but you really can leapfrog over, you know, five, four, three, right? You know, you, 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 could, you could get ahead of those folks uh, just by being active and being the the light in the darkness that is right now um so that's uh get there first with consistency yeah with consistency you're not going to do that without i mean that's like this so what what i just said is talk right and and what you do is you take the you take the develop the materials that are going to make the conversation for me that's what makes the conversation easy if i've got the three or four bullet points of stuff that i that i value i have to offer now i'm ready to pick up the phone like, oh, hey, did you know what, when, they, when, they, when they did the PPP and then, and then they passed further legislation to give you, um, you know, I forget what it was, Jen will probably know, 24 weeks to pay it back instead of eight weeks to pay it back, right? That one piece of information right there. Forget the, forget the 10 conversations I'm going to have on that day. I'm going to go back in my database and go, how many times did I fall short? Because if maybe I need 30 or 40 today to make up for all the rest, that's the day. Cause I'm gonna call all 34 to be like, Hey, Josh, it's Paul. Listen real quick. I just wanted to let you know, you know, I know you have a small business and, and, and I hope you've applied for the PPP, but if you had, they've just changed the legislation and now you have 24 weeks to pay it back. And instead of 70 or 80% payroll, it's now 60%. And I've got a link for you to send to you, you know, 
give me your, I know I've got your email, but I didn't want to just blind email it to you because this is super important. I want to get it to you. So, so you ready for my email? I'm going to send it to you. You know, is that, how's that for a reach out to your, to your database, right? And if I'm armed with that, I don't like to cold call. If I'm armed with that, I'll, I'll, I'll call a hundred people. I got something really cool to say right now. Do I have that every single day? I don't have that every single day. Okay. But, but when I do just, just hit it, you know, um, and, and doing a lot more lead generation right now is going to not only protect you and keep you in business, but it, it will land you way ahead because the people that aren't doing it are going to get disproportionately hurt the agents. And by the way, if you're an agent and you've had your head in the sand until you're watching this today, that's okay. 100% okay. I understand why. It's scary times out there. Okay. And I say to you, if you've done that or you've had your head in the sand 80%, that's okay. Get your daily actions that are going to take you to win in the market and take over your market. Okay. Get those daily actions and start today and, and make them stuff that you enjoy doing. You know, um, well, can I make a point? Absolutely. Um, I think Travis brought up, I know Travis, um, yeah. about, you know, Gary saying three to four hours of, of lead generation um, a day. And I think we're all crystal clear that the bread and butter and the backbone of our business is lead generation, quite frankly, of any business. Um, I think the distinction, and you talked about 10 contacts, is very few people can go from doing very little of that to three to four hours a day. It's not realistic. It's not sustainable. I always come back to sustainability. Any plan, if it's not sustainable, is not an effective plan. Mm -hmm. So most people need to work into that, right? Because you can turn it on maybe for a day or two and do three or four hours. And then the likelihood that, you know, if you were doing very little to begin with, and then all of a sudden you're doing three to four hours a day, the likelihood that you're going to sustain that is slim and none. So you got to work your way into it. And I think that's part of implicitly what you were suggesting with like 10 you know, contacts a day. So know yourself, understand where you're starting from, and then incrementally build upon that. The goal is to do three to four a day, but most people can't necessarily just turn a light switch on and go from zero or very little to three or four a day. So create some, some steps along the way, create the habit, and then eventually you can work your way into three or four a day, depending upon your level of commitment. Mm -hmm. So I think just recognizing yourself and where you are, and then how do you continue to progress and make sure whatever that plan is, it's sustainable for you. Mm -hmm. I think it's great. Yeah. And that's why we do, that's why when we're doing with our team leaders, uh, you know, a, a, uh, an accountability plan and daily reporting, we're doing it in hundred day chunks, you know, so that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a lot of, uh, it's a lot of days, but it's not forever. Right. So we can, we can, what do we do in a hundred days? And that's a number that, that's a number that's real easily divisible, right? So, so if I'm saying, hey, we're doing, we're doing, uh, we're doing ten live conversations, okay, right? Very easy. That's a thousand in a hundred days. It's easy to measure, and we can also go, hey, um, you know, I'm thirty days in, right? I should be at three hundred. If I'm at two hundred, I know I need to step up. If I'm at three ten, I go, hey, congratulations to myself, right? So that's what that looks like. Well, I think right now, too, if we're, I mean, Ben Kenny had said this at the beginning of the year that we should be on a 66 touch um, instead of a 33 touch. But right now we have a lot of information that we can give them just outside of real estate, too. Like the beaches are now open underneath these guidelines or, you know, these restaurants are now open um, as people are starting to reopen their business. And it's just another touch that you can give to your clients and friends and family besides just the, even the PPP loans, which you got all those stats, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. Ah, oh. absolutely. <laughs> but I think that's the important thing too, is that you're always coming from contribution and then truly showing that you, you care. And um, I'm on the, um, uh, I'm, I'm involved with the school at, in Hermosa Beach. And one of the things is, it's like, we just don't know what school's going to look like. Right. And I had a lot of parents that were very flustered when um, all of a sudden you're teaching kids at home. Right. And it's like, okay, step up and be that leader for your community and you know i created a facebook page and i'm like this is what the teacher's saying because a lot of people are like i'm having to work i have zoom calls i don't know how to coordinate a kindergartner you know because there were 26 kindergartners on a zoom call and it's like if you're showing up and like helping people you know do that then they're going to come to you for for other guidance like you said and they might call you as the 
the agent because they're going to know that's not even promoting yourself as an agent. Right. They're just going to know to go to you. Leading by example. Exactly. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I, I got some chat. Uh, I got some chat from, from Frank Bernardo, uh, who's one of uh, great team leaders um, in Central and Southern uh, region. And, and I, I just know from having worked with him for a while, you know, you, you, you know, really ask yourself, it's the first question I started with was superpowers. Really ask yourself what your superpowers are and, and be real open-minded about it. One of Frank's superpowers is he's a single dad. Um, and that may not sound like a superpower. That's why I raised that. And yet that is a phenomenal superpower for him. And he relates to more of his audience. Uh, he, when he goes through and he's got a whole audience that he's got to connect with, he goes through and he goes, how many people are, are, you know, it's not a live question. He's going through his data. How many of these people are single parents? How many are single moms? How many are single dads? And then he goes right to them with that. And that is an instant bond. So, uh, so you don't know necessarily, you know, where your bonds will be, but, but just or where your superpowers will be. If you don't know your superpowers, look at where, where you connect with the community. Um, you know, comes so from at, Paul, that's so spot on. It's comes from just coming from curiosity and asking yeah. good questions and then yeah. figuring out where you guys have a common link. I mean, that's the key to relationship building, create that connection, that, that personalization. That, that's yeah. so essential. We're in a relationship business. It's mm -hmm. all about building the relationships and creating the connection. Mm -hmm. And one more thing that I want to say to our agents, because uh, because we, we're going to have to end, and I'll ask a final thought is make sure you get on our tech uh, our tech calls on Thursday. I I have personally been using Command, um, and this is a way to really get into business and really get into contact with people. I just did a tech audit with a top agent at Keller Williams. Who, uh, who really just is not tech savvy. And so I just said to them, hey, what, you know, what are you spending on technology? And they were sort of wasting a couple hundred dollars a month in technology stuff that we have for free in command. But in addition to saving that $200, they weren't actually using it anyway, okay? So they, they had some automated stuff going out, but you know, we, can, we can help you, every agent, every agent in the region, we can help you build a smart plan for, for COVID, you know, what goes out to your people, we can help you build that. Uh, your team leader is a great resource. Uh, every office is a tech coordinator. And then also tune into our regional tech webinars and ask questions in the chat box if you don't know uh, how to do it or, or reach out to our regional tech person because we want everybody who wants to be, who raises their hand to be set up in command with their database in command on a regular program, uh, uh, touching, touching all of their clients. So final thoughts, uh, maybe we'll, maybe, uh, maybe I'll start with uh, Scott so we'll do it in reverse order. So final thoughts, uh, final thoughts for our agents watching this. I'm gonna piggyback what Josh always says, it's consistency and discipline. Yeah, just get into in, action. Right? Just take, get into action. Yeah. Get into action. And do it on a daily basis. And I love it. it. Yeah. Josh. Um, have a plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so here's my challenge, right? Yeah. And uh, keep it simple, real simple. We can always, you know, get it more detailed. Yep. Yeah. Very simple. So here's my challenge to everybody who's, who's watching this. The final thought that Scott has is be consistent. The final thought that Josh has ties into that. And that's have a plan. My challenge to you, to every person on this webinar is make sure you have a daily plan. Have a daily goal for lead generation, okay? Just do it, just have that daily goal. Set the daily goal low if you want to, doesn't matter, yep. but make sure you have a goal daily. And Jen? I was just gonna say, come from the heart, truly care about the people, and if you truly care and, uh, about your friends and family, it'll show, and then it'll, the world works back for you. And if you truly care, you'll have a plan. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and you know what? And you'll and take that's, action. <laughs> that's well, that and take action, and that's coming from two, you know, very action-oriented people. And I, I, you know, I have a heart, and I'm very heartfelt, very heartfelt. And sometimes I don't have a plan, and sometimes I don't take action. So I take, I take, I do take action. I take sort of sporadic action, right? Because I don't have a plan. When I have that, like, here's what I need to do to be successful today. 
And, and I would say put the goals low, okay? Whatever you think you need to do, you know, put a bare minimum of half of that. That, that, that doesn't sound like all that inspirational, you know, but I got to tell you, you got to have a number that you're going to hit. Yep. And then once you start hitting that consistently, then go ahead and double it, right? The difference between a goal and a commitment. Yes, the difference between a goal and a commitment. I love it. You know, goal is sort of this hopeful thing. Commitment is like, this is happening. no matter. Non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Okay, I'll leave it with that. I hope that your, I hope that our agents non-negotiable is to do a lot more lead generation and be very specific about it. Uh, give, give command a shot because it's already, it's, it's free to all of our agents. It's included in, in, in what we provide. Uh, it's easy to learn and we'll help you do that. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks so much to the panelists. Appreciate Love the it. opportunity. Okay. Great to learn Thank from you. these guys. Yep. And we'll, guys. we'll uh, talk to you all later. Thanks for having me. Okay.